Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and we are now at the top of the American Heavy Cruiser line. Let's talk about how you play Tier 10 American Heavy Cruiser USS Des Moines. Des Moines is honestly one of the best Tier 10 cruisers in World of Warships. She has been from the beginning, but it took me as a player a long time to wrap my brain around that, to really appreciate this ship for what she is. One of the reasons that I'm doing these videos, why I've done this entire American Heavy Cruiser line series, is because I was very late to appreciate these ships. I'd probably been playing five years before I really was like, huh, there's something really cool about these ships. And I'm trying to kind of share what I learned so that other people don't have to wait so long to discover how amazing this line is. And so now that we're here at what is nominally the top of the line, Annapolis excluded, right? Super ships kind of being their own thing. Tier 10 being the top of the line, we are at Des Moines. Des Moines, of course, a historical ship. They actually built these. Several of them were commissioned into service. I believe the last one survives today as a museum ship. That should be USS Little Rock up in Buffalo, New York, of course. Little Rock doesn't look like she did. Her World War II configuration, unfortunately, has been lost to time um, because many of these underwent conversions into, like, guided missile cruisers and all kinds of other bizarre things uh, as the Cold War progressed into the 50s and 60s. But the Des Moines we have in World of Warships is her original kind of World War II-style configuration. She is the pinnacle of the American all-gun cruiser concept. She is an excellent ship. Let's dive in and, and explore so I can, uh, I can talk about why I think that. All right, so survivability. 50,600 hit points. Let's have a quick pick. Nope, a quick peek. Nope, I do not have survivability expert. That, uh, survivability expert, excuse me. That is her base, uh, base health there. So yeah, um, comparing her to her, her contemporaries, by which I mean other tier 10 traditional heavy cruisers, I'm, try I'm specifically excluding light cruisers, and the super cruisers, right? The Stalingrads of the world, right? The, the 12, 11, 10 inch guns, like you know, Puerto Rico. I would not compare this ship to Puerto Rico. They're not. They're, they're not remotely alike. Um, Fifty thousand six hundred is pretty respectable. It's. I think it's a bit on the low end. I'll be honest. It's a little on the low end. I mean, Zhao retains the worst in category for this, right? Because Zhao doesn't still doesn't even have fifty thousand hit points. They're like they're tier a hipper has more hit points than a Zao, ladies and gentlemen, because, because, right? If you can explain that to me, you're better at this game than I am. Um, but you have you do have a touch over 50,000. That puts you a little bit ahead of Salem, who has that crazy heel, uh, and a little bit, ahind, little bit behind Venezia and Howden Liu. So, you, you know, when you compare her to her contemporaries, not bad, right? At Hindenburg, 51,900, you're right in the ballpark. Of course, you are significantly behind those aforementioned supercruisers, so you do have to keep that in mind. Des Moines is, you know, I guess I'll talk more about this when we get to when we get to um, consumables. But you know, the the, the 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 utility that these ships provide and the the amount of different ways you can valid ways you can configure Des Moines is one of the reasons that she has remained relevant and useful. Uh, on top of her main battery. So there's a lot to like about this ship and her hit points keep her competitive. 7% torpedo protection. Hey, guess what, guys? This is best in the line and it's still garbage. So do not take torpedoes. You are the worst. The American heavy cruisers are the worst at taking torpedoes of like every heavy cruiser in the game. It's like it's like the United States Navy. It's like NAVC kind of looked at it and went, well, we don't want our cruiser captains taking torpedoes, so we'll just give them every incentive to dodge them, and that's where we're at. So there you go. Uh, maneuverability and concealment. 34.7 knots is with the speed flag. Des Moines' base speed, 33 knots and change. 770 on the turning circle, 8.6 on the rudder shift. Turning circle is actually pretty good. Uh, again, very comparable to the likes of Venezia, Howden Liu. Actually a little better than Zhao, surprising, and I think that has to do with Zhao's overall length um, being a, a, a bit longer because she has the extra turrets, all that extra weight from the torpedoes and the extra magazine. So, um, yeah, I mean, Des Moines handles pretty well, right? When you get this ship moving, um, she's very, very, very responsive to the rudder. Turning circle is not quite best in tier, but very, very close. Certainly top two or three. 10.9 on the surface detection. Okay, so we kind of, you know, we, we, we harped on this down at Baltimore at tier eight, right? You have that amazing radar range basically equaling your detection radius at tier eight. 
at Buffalo, it got a little worse, right? We were up to like, I think, 10.7. And here at Des Moines, we're at 10.9. And unfortunately, it's just one of the ways Wargaming has chosen to balance this ship. You do have a 10-kilometer radar available to you in the consumables list, but you are you have nearly a kilometer of detection range before it can be used. In other words, uh, uh, something that spots you has about a, you know 900, 1,000 meters that it can play with before uh, you're able to counter spot it with your radar button. Given this ship's rate of fire, how many shells it can throw down range, that, trust me, as a destroyer captain who's run afoul of plenty of Des Moines in his career, that's only fair. So it is, it is a balancing thing, but it is unfortunate because it just means the ship is a little more difficult to play that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, 10.9 is still very good. There aren't many surface ships that, that beat you out at this tier. Napoli, of all things, uh, of course, with her 10-inch guns. And then, of course, uh, how new, uh, 10.3. Um, those are the only like heavy style cruisers that are ahead of you. You got to remember, uh, well, actually, okay, I lied. Zhao, of course, ahead of you as well by, by right at about a kilometer. Basically all the other cruisers in this matchmaking bracket in this tier, I should say that, um, that outspot you are going to be light cruisers. There are very, very, very few heavy cruisers that outspot you. There are probably a handful of tier nine ones, but I'm really focused on the tier 10 ones. So there's a two or three tier 10 ones. So your detection is really good for a tier 10 cruiser. It's just perhaps not quite as good as you would wish, given the radar and the way you're going to want to play this ship. Um, and it's not quite as good as a couple other Tier 10, quote-unquote, heavy cruisers that are, uh, that are available. Main battery. Well, you should, be, you should be familiar with this turret configuration. You've got a pair of super-firing, triple-barreled turrets forward and one turret aft. But these now are the infamous American autoloaders. That's right. These turrets are largely unmanned. These, these have the highest rate of fire of any 203-inch guns in World of Warships. The base reload is 5.5 seconds, which is absolutely insane when you consider what these AP shells can do. And you've, you've learned that by now, right? These are the same HE and AP shells you've been firing for several tiers now, certainly down as far as tier 8 for the AP, and I think even before that for the HE. But the bottom line is in terms of shell performance, velocity, ballistics, all that sort of thing, it's the same, it's the same gun, right? Uh, it's still a 55 caliber barrel. All of that is going to feel very comfortable. And you see there, 15.8 kilometer range. That is the base range of the ship. We had 15.6 down at Buffalo. So you ought to be, you know, again, pretty well used to that by now. But the reload, the reload is everything. One of the mods that I have installed, you know, uh, will give you the, uh, the uh, what will the shell overmatch, right? And then, of course, the maximum AP and HE DPM of the ship. And you see there in this configuration, nearly 600,000 DPM out of the AP. Getting into a brawl, a mid or a close range brawl with a Des Moines for almost anything is, is, is death. Like it, 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 this, it, this, this ship will chew up battleships, right? If you've played through Baltimore and Buffalo to get to this point, you know what the American AP, heavy cruiser AP is capable of. You've seen it. And now you have something with basically double the reload of a Buffalo. Like, it is lunacy what you can get up to with this ship. Go look on YouTube, man. Just do a search for Des Moines. You will find the most ridiculous, insane, hilarious games of Des Moines just doing Des Moines things. It is, this main battery is honestly, it is worth the effort. It is a ton of fun, and it is absolutely silly. Absolutely silly. Um... You see there, the gun reload on mine is 4.8. That's because I have main battery modification 3. That is uh, as low as you can get it base before, you know, you mix in other skills that might lower it conditionally. Uh, we'll show you that We'll show you that layout in a minute. But yeah, it is, um, I can't extol the virtues, virtues enough, right? So we talked about it down at Baltimore uh, at tier 8. We had a 10-second reload, and that felt amazing. Now you've literally cut it, basically cut it in half, and it just feels even more amazing. So yeah, there's a lot to like here. I'm just realizing, speaking of Baltimore, that we uh, we did not talk about um, armor layout. So let me back. Let me take a quick step back. We'll, we'll back up just a hair. Um, armor layout again, more or less the same, more of the same of what you've been getting 
up to this point. There are a couple of minor improvements here to, to Des Moines' armor scheme, but you're probably not going to notice them very much in practice. For starters, you still have the 27 millimeter bow. This means that your overmatch threshold against this bow remains 15 inches. At tier 10, you are not going to see many 15 inch armed battleships. You will, there are some in your matchmaking queue uh, bracket, right? But you will not see many. Um, when you do see them, you can laugh, you can point and laugh at them. But um, almost every other battleship will overmatch your bow, some of them very easily, because of course now we're up to 20 inch guns or so in the game. Um, the casemate armor is improved. It's 30 mils now instead of 27. What does that functionally mean? Not much, not much. Most, um, what it really means is when you're up against an opposing light cruiser, the kind of question is, has he taken IFHE or not for his shells? If he has, he's still going to full pen you through the casemate. If he has not, the casemate armor will shatter more of his shells, right? That's basically the main difference. So against other heavy cruisers and against battleships, this casemate buff is basically meaningless. When you're fighting smaller things, things smaller than you, opposing light cruisers, opposing destroyers, this, this armor change is a little noteworthy but on paper, but probably not a lot in practice. Your belt armor remains 6 inches, 152 millimeters. So again, you've been used to this from the you know, same belt you had at Baltimore, same belt you had at Buffalo. All of that is the same. Quick look at the Citadel, and you can see now that Des Moines is a little more vulnerable in this department, right? If you remember, the Citadel we had for Baltimore and for Buffalo was basically underneath the superstructure, um, kind of in between, you know, underneath the stacks, we had the, the Citadel all the way out to the edge of the ship and above the waterline, and then underneath the um, the barbettes, we had very thin very, um, let me see if I can, why aren't the barbettes modeled in here? I don't know why they're not modeling in, but um, we had very thin um, kind of uh, magazine type citadel spaces that were much more protected within the hull of the ship. You see here, Baltimore, do, I mean, uh, Des Moines doesn't suffer this problem, right? You do have the six inch belt covering everything. That's nice. Um, but unfortunately, her citadel runs barbette to barbette. So you have a huge citadel on this ship. Broadside Des Moines gets slapped around like by battleships by just about everybody right just the way they, or heavy cruisers really right six inches of ap does not stop I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any heavy cruiser shells that it'll stop but probably not not in this tier so when you're caught broadside hey people other players in the game will be happy to remind you that you are still in fact a cruiser and uh, oh by the way here's a fat chunk of damage to remind you of it so yeah um but of course, the most common thing you'll see when you play or when you play up against a Des Moines or when you play one yourself, you'll see them parking up next to islands, trying to get thin, trying to show this bow at things. And again, even when they're up against stuff that will smash through the bow, a Yamato comes to comes to mind or even an Iowa, for example, um, most battleships, uh, you know, the narrow profile does help you a little bit. So you've got that going for you, but. You can't rely on it forever. If you do find yourself bow into something that can overmatch your bow, you need to find, you need to have a plan to get out of there, find a way to either win that duel or escape or just accept your death and hey, go for the ram. As my buddy Lord Zath likes to say, use the final torpedo <laughs> and just see what you can get out of it. All right, server building artillery um, airstrikes. Yeah, I mean, We've been talking about this up on the line. This is the same ones basically you had down at Tier 9. I think now you have a little more range. You're up to 8 kilometers now, but you've got uh, two flights, two bombs in each, and, of course, those bombs hit fairly decently. So lots to like there if uh, you find yourself hunting submarines. A defense. All right, so the A, the A suites of Baltimore and Buffalo were almost equivalent, very, very comparable. Blessedly, Des Moines is an upgrade. Now, is it a significant upgrade? That depends. It depends. On the long range side of the things, it's not a significant upgrade. Okay? The long range A bubble of Des Moines is comprised of the same six double barreled 5 inch 38s that we have seen for several tiers now. So from a long range perspective, there's nothing to get excited about. Certainly not from a flak perspective. You see six, pu six puffs there. That's because I have the focus fire training skill on the captain. Five puffs is base, and I believe it's about 1680 or 1650. Uh, 1680 is the base damage out of the flak clouds. So, I mean, it's decent flak. It's serviceable. It's not amazing. It's not, it's not like you know, um, uh, Dutch flak, for example, right? Um, 
where the big buff to Des Moines comes is in that mid-range AA, because Des Moines' mid-range AA is not made up of 40 millimeter bofors, it's made of, of the 7.62 millimeter mounts. And this AA mount, not only does the mid-range now bubble go out to four kilometers, that's nice, you have extra time to murder planes because a little more range, um, these things hit like trains. So you have 12 of these scattered all over the ship. You saw two up in the bow. I should have four down each side of the ship and then two more back aft, two more tubs here hanging off the aft end of the ship. Des Moines mid-range AA is frankly very punishing and you're gonna see this in the game, the example game that I'm gonna show you here in just a little bit. Um, so overall, her AA, her AA suite is exactly what you want out of a crew, of an AA suite, right? You could wish for more damage out of the long range, but but the overwhelming majority of it you see there, look, you've got 110 in the long range bubble, 400 plus in the mid range bubble, and then a little bit of a little bit of chip damage, 80 or 90 there in the inner bubble. That's the kind of configuration you want, right? If you want to drive a ship with good anti aircraft fire in World of Warships, you want the majority of that punch to be in the long range and mid range bubble, and you want that ship to put up hopefully eight flak puffs or more, because there are ships that put up more than eight flak puffs. Um, that is a really good AA suite. Now, at Tier 10, there aren't many ships that n tick all of those boxes, right? Um, the Dutch sort of do. The Dutch have a... Uh, Houghton Liu here at Tier 10 has a better mid-range AA suite than this in terms of uh, damage, over 500, but it doesn't go out to four kilometers. So you're, miss you're missing a little bit of range there. She also puts up more flak and has a longer overall range. So Han Liu is probably a better, a better AA platform than Des Moines is. Goliath probably is as well, because not only does she have um, more flak, but she has more DPS out of her long range bubble. And although she has a little less DPS out of, the, out of that mid range bubble, it's very close. So all in uh, Goliath is also very comparable. Um, but yeah, Des Moines A suite is quite good. It's worth investing in. You don't have to sink a ton into it, right? Again, I'm thinking if you you know you take focus fire training and uh, you know maybe uh, m maybe the AA mod in slot three if you want something like that, you'll get good work out of it when there's a carrier in the game. All right, let's have a look at uh, upgrades and all that sort of thing. So again, you're sticking with main armaments modification one. This is a very very important modification for Des Moines, and I suppose we we didn't really talk about it. But one of the things that uh, uh, players have learned over the years when you're fighting a Des Moines is to fire at these forward turrets, right? Fire at these forward turrets. You've got eight inches of, of frontal plate armor on the glacis plate here on these turrets. And uh, against another Des Moines, for example, or a Salem, you know, you go bow in. It's very, very common tactic to try and get these uh, get these turrets to either in cap or possibly even destroyed. I've seen turrets. I've seen Des Moines running around in competitive World of Warships with both of their front turrets destroyed. So um, this main armaments mod in slot one is very, 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 very important. Do not, do not forget this. Of all the ships in the tier, this is the one you absolutely want it in above all else. Again, I'm running radar in slot two. You should be used to this by now. We've seen it at tier eight and tier nine. Uh, again, because I'm running radar in the second consumable slot, do not choose fighters. Please do not ever choose fighters. There is a case to be made for spotting aircraft in certain configurations of the ship. However, the configuration I'm presenting to you would be for more like randoms or ranked, that kind of thing. I personally believe that the radar is the right is the is the best uh, the best way the best way to get most the most out of the ship in those kinds of environments. And so I think you're better off running uh, radar and then radar mod in slot two. If you start getting into clan battles or specific kind of corner configurations of the ship, again, there is a case to be made for spotting aircraft, but 88, 90 games out of 100, I wouldn't do that. Um, I'm running Turret Traverse here in slot two. Um, I've been saying all, all along, if you're running a heavy cruiser, you want aiming systems mod. I kind of break that rule here on Des Moines largely because of the reload speed. When you're reload, when you know, you're throwing heavy cruiser shells downrange faster than most light cruisers can reload, you kind of don't, not so concerned about where they go because if the next sal if your that one salvo misses, hey, less than five seconds later, here comes another salvo. So I've gone with main pattery modification here to kind of offset what I did in slot six, and you'll see that in just a second. If you wanted to run aiming systems mod here in this slot, there's absolutely no reason not to. It's a perfectly valid choice. Same with AA guns modification one here. 
I don't run it because I feel like it's po- like I've said several times, it's possible to put invest too much into the anti-aircraft suite. I feel like this mod kind of crosses that line unless you're going to know you're going to be divved up with an aircraft carrier or something like that. You know you're going to see a planes. Hey, invest in this is a perfectly good mod. Secondary battery, don't do this on the ship. It's not worth it. Um, slot four. Again, I'm running airstrike modification. We've talked about why that is. I feel like getting those airstrikes to cycle once you've got a submarine sort of, you've got an idea where he is, having those airstrikes come back every 20 seconds, 20 to 22 seconds, and getting the extra damage out of the depth charges makes this a really, really good mod in the modern game. Um, steering gears is uh, potentially a valid one. I mean, you'd be dropping your, your rudder shift down close to maybe like six seconds and change. I mean, maybe, not terrible. It's okay. Um, propulsion modification, also a very, very valid way to play the ship. And we're going to talk more about this in just a minute. So keep this one in mind. Again, I, for me, I, you know, again, randoms and ranked right now, I would recommend airstrike modification. Propulsion mod has a good case, and we're going to get to that in just a second. I think you're crazy to run anything but concealment in slot five. Um, again, there's a case to be made for ship consumables for the radar duration. I think this is too risky. You know, you're already a cruiser. You're already relatively soft. You want all the stealth you can get for as you know as long as you can get it. This is dubious, um, especially given that you're you know how you depending on how you configure the ship, you're probably you know, the way this ship is configured. Right, I'm running a 10.9 detection on a 15.8 kilometer um, uh, range, so I only have five kilometers to play with. You know, uh, I want all that. I want to maximize that space, right? So that's that concealment is my recommendation here. Um, I wouldn't do steering gears. I feel like this is overkill. On certain tier 10 high, uh, heavy cruisers, there's a case to be made for like playing open water, uh, you know, long range. If you have a cruiser with a lot of range, let's say like an Henri Quatre, there is a case to be made for like doubling up on the steering gears mods and go leaning less into the concealment because you're going to be playing at long range. You're going to be, you know, as soon as somebody shoots at you, you're going to be shifting your rudder. And that rudder shift time is very, very nice. But I don't think that's the right fit for Des Moines. So I wouldn't do this. All right. Slot six. There are, well, technically all four of these are valid choices, okay? Let's talk about why you might choose any one of them. For me, again, I'm, I'm configuring this ship just for you know maximum utility and ranked and randoms. I think main battery mod 3 is a great way to go. You lower that uh, reload speed by another seven tenths of a second. You get it down. You saw there 4.8. That's really, really handy. It allows you to absolutely just do horrible things to opposing destroyers, uh, opposing cruisers who make the mistake of showing you too much of an angle, opposing battleships who show you the mistake of showing too much of an angle, and so on and so forth. You will not, you will never regret choosing this modification in this slot, in my opinion. Um, gun range. We talked about this on Baltimore, right? We've, we've, we've kind of highlighted now how range starts to become a problem. In the early tiers, tier 6 and 7, Pensacola, New Orleans, range not really a problem. The higher up the line you go, the range does not improve. And so now it becomes a problem. Now you're constantly outranged, potentially by other heavy cruisers, but certainly by super cruisers and all the battleships. So the range mod starts to feel a little attractive. And as kind of like we talked about the spotter plane, there are builds of the ship where I think this is valid. I wouldn't do this for just everyday random play. But if you're configured a ship for a specific position in clan battles, king of the sea, or you have a particular kind of quirky fun thing you want to try on a specific map, um, yeah, absolutely, this is this is a valid mod, but it's a very corner case sort of thing for me. Auxiliary armaments modification too, like we talked about down at Buffalo, this is really only good if you're going, you're just going all in maximum AA because this this really adds more flak and more DPS to those AA bubbles, and that's amazing. It's a great feeling when you can push that button and just make the carrier player cry, but you're, you know, this is a this is a great modification to be, you know, you're giving up main battery modification three for this. That feels really terrible. Um, so again, unless you're diving with a carrier or you know you're gonna, you know, you're playing a a, a mode or a, a tournament or something where you're gonna find yourself under aerial assault all the time, or you, you really wanna you really wanna piss off the carrier player, I wouldn't choose this. Now, tier ten offers you this unique upgrade for Des Moines. This is an enhanced propulsion plant, or sometimes you'll hear it called legendary Des Moines or unique Des Moines. Um, this, when you combine it with, uh, down at slot four, the other propulsion modification, when you combine these two together, right, you end up with a Des Moines that off the mark, she goes from zero to 20 knots in like three seconds. It is crazy. It's like better than British light cruiser acceleration. You almost have to see it to believe it. Um, I'll put a little clip in here to kind of show you what I'm talking about while I'm while I'm doing it. Um, basically what it is is that from from the time that Des Moines you, you start off, you, you, you know, you're starting at just flat zero, you go to max speed, 
And and for the first, up until you're like half speed, you just accelerate like crazy. Again, in certain configurations of the ship, in certain situations, this is an excellent way to build out your Des Moines. If you're planning on sitting bow in and you're trying to dodge shots coming in on you, um, bow in, you can play little throttle games and you can change your throttle very quickly with this configuration. Um, and you can see how quickly you accelerate with that little clip I showed. I mean, so it's, it's a little crazy. So if you're if you feel like if you fall in love with the ship and you feel like you're going to play a lot of Des Moines in competitive modes or something like that, I would encourage you to invest the coal, pick up this modification. There will be times that you want to use it. Would I necessarily build that ship for everyday play in random battles or, or ranked? No, I wouldn't. But I think you want that. You want to have this uh, upgrade available to you. You want to have it, you know, in your uh, in your stable, right? Available to grab and then deploy here when you want to use the Des Moines in that situation. All right, let's talk commander skills real briefly, as we have been doing. I like Grease the Gears because turret traverse is never a bad thing. It's not as essential as it is on, say, Buffalo, right? Because you have, you're have you going to spend a lot of time kind of more focused on keeping your bow pointed at things in Des Moines. But when you do need to make a maneuver, when you do want to get that stern turret to action, this skill is worth the one-point investment. I've taken consumable specialists here um, just because I like my defensive fire to come back a little quicker and because I'm not able to run the defensive A modification in slot two. I've continually run radar, so I like having that defensive fire come back a little quicker. Um, if this is not your bag, I think gun feeder is okay. The, the guns on Des Moines reload in, you know, this configuration, less than five seconds. Is gun feeder amazing? No. Is it worth one point? Yeah, it probably is. Uh, barring that, I don't think you can go wrong with last stand because sometimes you'll get your engine knocked out when you aren't expecting it. I've taken Demolition Expert here at Tier 2 to go with Consumables Enhancement and Focus Fire Training. About the only other really valid one here in this tier would be Priority Target and... If I'm a Des Moines, I kind of accept that I'm a priority target and that battleships want to murder me, so I don't necessarily feel the need uh, to know how many people are aiming at me. But again, if that's useful information to you, I could easily see giving up Demolition Expert and picking this up. If it were me, I would not give up Focus Fire Training, and I would not give up Consumables Enhancements to pick this up. I would swap, to, I would swap Demolition Expert over here. As we have been doing for the rest of the line, the core Tier 3 skills, in my opinion, are, of course, Adrenaline Rush, Heavy AP Shells, and superintendent you want your ap to hit as hard as possible you're going to be firing at a whole 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 lot superintendent here at the high tier gives me not only the extra radar and the extra heal but occasionally an extra target defensive fire can be very very handy and of course adrenaline rush sooner or later i'm going to take probably catastrophic damage as a des moines and hey every little bit of reload helps and you definitely want concealment expert here at tier four are there other tier four skills you could consider you could consider a defense and asw expert we talked a little bit about this on uh, down looking at buffalo the a buff is noteworthy if you want to lean into it i just feel like the opportunity cost of the skill is too high four points in my opinion is too much to invest in for your aa then in that you might not get a uh, you might not get any value out of it there might not be a carrier in the game of course this skill does buff your depth charges your depth charge damage um so if there's a sub in the game or a carrier you're going to get value out of it and you might get value out of it, let's say, and subs are much more common than carriers these days. So I don't know, maybe you maybe you have a preference here. But for me, I think for four points, this isn't worth it. Um, I would not take IFHE. There's no need for this. You don't. This, there's no value in this skill. You don't get over any meaningful thresholds by adding 25 more cent percent to your HE penetration. RPF is, eh, to me, this is okay, but it's not what I wouldn't take this. I mean, if there, again, there's probably corner cases in terms of clan battle builds and sort of that sort of thing where this skill, you're going to grab it. But for just everyday, you know, random play, I don't think this skill has a lot of value on Des Moines. And we've talked about, you know, other other cruiser builds, a top grade gunner versus outnumbered. If it were me, I think there is some value in top grade gunner, uh, particularly if you are... It was pointed out to me that this was a great skill to use on like Baltimore because, hey, if they're in my radar range, they're under my radar, I'm getting I'm getting uh, an extra reload, main battery reload buff out of top grade gunner. That's actually a great valid point here on the American cruisers. So if you want to invest in another four point skill, lean into the main battery a little harder. I think top grade gunner is a solid pick. Um, I wouldn't pick outnumbered, but some people like this skill. So if that's you, go for it. For flags, basically the same flag configuration we were using down at Buffalo, right? We don't want to explode, so we grab Juliet Charlie. We want to go a little faster. We want our consumables to come back a little quicker. We have a heal, so India Delta now feels really good. Uh, I want to maximize my fire chance, so we grab both India X-Ray and Victor Lima. We throw up November Echo Set of 7 for just a little extra AA, and then Sierra Bravo to buff whatever it is that I put in this first consumable slot. 
All right, I think I hit just about all the good stuff. Let's um, let's load up this uh, let's load up this sample game and show you guys the kind of shenanigans you can get up to in a Des Moines. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to this game in Tier 10's USS Des Moines as we spawn into the north side of what I consider to be the worst map in World of Warships, and that is Okinawa. Okinawa is, of course, um, a fairly historical map. You can actually pull up like a Google Earth view of these exact islands in this exact layout and configuration around Okinawa. But unfortunately, in my opinion, this map is not balanced very well, and there is a radical difference between the spawns and just this. I don't like, I've never cared for how this map plays. That's a personal thing. Um, but that's a different conversation from the other side. Let's talk about Des Moines. Real briefly, let's have a quick look at the lineups. Of course, we are in a carrier game, four destroyers, submarine on each side, only two cruisers, four battleships. So I've got lots of things to be frosty of. Not only am I going to have a hard time staying undetected with the planes in the game, I've got a lot of battleship shells, a lot of big battleship shells to be a frosty of. Two radars mean that, I mean, if I'm not careful, I'll get, I might get caught out sometime when I think I'm, when I'm uh, stealthy. And of course, the opposing destroyers are something I always have to be on the lookout for. And ugh, submarines. Yay. Okay. Now, initial deployments here. I have a couple of options as we start the game. One is I can move up and like hug this island right off my port side in the B cap and just hope and pray that that works out. The problem is, is that in a game with an aircraft carrier, you have to remember aircraft carriers in World of Warships, aircraft carriers and submarines punish, mercilessly punish stationary play. If you're in a game with a sub or you're in a game with a carrier, the best thing you can do to preserve your HP and screw them up is keep moving. Do not, I mean, slow, maybe toggle your speed, yes, but don't stop. And you're going to see me make that mistake later in the game. So remember this conversation, and I'll point out when I screw up, okay? But just, just keep that in mind, because, you know, historically, when, car when, when surface ships would come under carrier attack, what would the first thing that you would hear the captain say? Full speed. He wants all the speed he can to maneuver, to have the ability to turn, uh, toward, you know, port to starboard, whatever, to avoid incoming torpedoes or dive bombers or whatever. Speed is everything. And when you're up against planes and certainly up against submarines, staying mobile is the key. Now, I'm going to back up my friendly destroyers here on the top end of the A cap. I'm going to go back real briefly and talk about one of the reasons that I don't like Okinawa. And that is it plays a little bit too heavy to this northwestern side of the map, in my opinion. Both teams will almost invariably send a tremendous amount of ships, a tremendous amount of firepower to this flank. Now, it can be good and it can be bad, right? Because you've got a lot of island cover up here. As a cruiser player, I have lots of options, lots of ways to break line of sight and still be useful and so on. So as a cruiser player, that's great. But for map control, I'm still playing behind an island and I have a hard... I'm, 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 it's, ch it's more challenging to support my ships, uh, my, my destroyers or submarines that are up here in this cap circle trying to make it work for them. Just really irritating, right? Because that's my job. Like, my job is to uh, murder opposing destroyers, support my guys, uh, you know, bring my flex my anti aircraft fire, which, of course, I am running DFA in this match. Pretty excited about that. And I'm even teamed up with this Minnesota. You know, he and I uh, have quite a bit of AA power. And it's good because there's two Delawares and a Midway on the opposing team. So, yeah, a lot of plane squadrons to be at least partially frosty of. And if speaking of the Delawares, here they come, baby. Here they come. Now, ordinarily, you might, you might consider, yeah, I hit the island there. You might think that I should be using my defensive fire against these dive bombers. I will almost, as a, we'll talk real briefly about, about anti-aircraft kind of strategy here. Give me a moment, I'll pause this. When I'm using defensive fire, I will almost always reserve it for carrier planes given the opportunity. Because if I'm going to spend my consumable... I want to I want to I want to cost the opposing team something tangible. In this instance, I'm murdering planes off the carrier's flight deck that he will have to regenerate. Yes, yes, he will continually generate planes over the course of the match. I know, but the bottom line is is it costs him time to do that. And so over the course of a match, the more planes you kill, the less chance he has, the more difficult it is for that carrier player to bring back a full squadron on demand of whatever it is that he wants. 
The reason the hybrid battleships are so irritating is that because no matter how many of these planes you murder, it doesn't matter. The next one will still come off the deck at full strength. So I will almost never use my defensive fire against these things in a situation where there is a carrier in the game. If I have nothing else to use a defensive fire charge on, well, yeah, I'll use it. But like in this game, I have to, I've got to, I'm saving my defensive fire charges for the midway. I'm not using them on the Delaware planes, and that is intentional. Opposing Cossack is in this cap. Cossack is a very deadly destroyer, and we only have a Benson to oppose him. But the beauty of this is these Delawares have kind of made a bit of a mistake. Certainly this lead Delaware has, as he keeps pushing up the two line and is spotted by my team. I've got the ability to kick, sit back here. We talked about using the islands to my advantage. Here's a great example of it. Thrasher was able to get spots on him, and in a minute we'll get some planes to get some spots on him. Uh, we'll be able to do really good work on this guy, and he won't really have an opportunity to shoot back simply because of all the island cover. I'm going to take this salvo. That's the last salvo I'm going to get, quote-unquote, for free. He does pick me up right there. He has the opportunity to shoot at me. He does take it, but he's got a little bit of a, little bit of a, uh, you know, he doesn't lead it quite right. I get a second fire. I get more fires there. He is, this dude is, in, this dude is dead. Like, he is screwed. Just like that. We caught up on ships. They're down a battleship. That feels pretty sexy. Thrasher doing some good work there. The Thrasher is actually going to be one of the heroes of this game, so pay attention to that guy. Cossack is back in the cap, still trying to work things. You have to remember, he outspots the Benson. Benson is trying to preserve his health. That's a, like, if I'm the Benson, that is a fight I really, really, really don't want. But by him spotting the Cossack, the Cossack firing, I actually have an opportunity here to lob shells over this island and have an impact on this game. That Cossack is continuing, or this battle, I should say, this little engagement. Cossack is continuing to reverse. He doesn't have a heal. He does have a smoke. They land some more damage and some more resets into him as the Delaware is going to come back with another round of dive bombers. But now, if you have a look at the mini-map, on this flank, all they have is a Cossack and a Delaware, whereas we have an Iowa, a Conqueror, a Benson, a Minnesota, a Thrasher, and me. I'm done messing around. I'm done playing nice with these guys. We're going into this cap. We're going to murder this Cossack. We're picking up this cap. That's happening. The opposing team is very, very heavy at the C cap. You can see that down there right now. The ship's down there starting to try to have to kind of a, kind of uh, give ground. And the Cossack comes out of his smoke. I get detected, which means I know he's, in, he's pretty close to my radar bubble. I take the chance. Sure enough, he's well inside my radar bubble. And there we go. Now, I'm going to let the Thrasher or the Benson pick up this cap. I initially am like, nah, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to go in there. I'll be exposed. The Delaware will shoot me. The, somebody on the planes will drop me something. And eventually, the Thrasher is going to go in and pick up this cap as I'm going to swing a little farther over and still continue to trail this Minnesota. Delaware is right at the extreme edge of my range. This is one of those quirks where he's right on the bubble, but because of the travel time of my shells, I'm not able to land shells on him. Right? Like the game's going to let me fire. They're going to tell me I have a lock, but by the time those shells travel the 16 kilometers to get where they are, he's moved too far, and those shells will no longer land. Uh, they, land all, they all land behind him. So eventually, I just, I just give up on that and turn and cut into the cap. Now, let's talk real briefly about the strategic situation and how the next couple minutes of this game are going to unfold. For starters, uh, we're up a ship feels good, but we have no board control whatsoever. We're about to pick up our first cap of the game, Thrasher in front of me, and I'm going to hop in here to help him out. We're going to pick up A. That's going to stem some of the bleeding. But the opposing team owns basically the south half of the map. All of our force is up here, and so we're going to have to find some way to translate that into, into victory. This Moskva has taken up a position to, to guard the B-cap. Remember, I, he basically took the mirror of the position that I was discussing earlier, which would have been on the northern side of the B-cap. He's taken the mirror position on the south side, but he's, look at that shot he's showing me. I'm going to put the AP in the barrel, and we're going to see if we can tag this guy, because Moskva's a little soft, isn't she? Especially at this angle, he gets his engines cooking. I'm trying to lead him a little bit. I think I am going to clip him for some full pins, but I'm not going to get the big citadels I'm looking for as he's just trying. He's trying to reposition and get his bow turned back to the north to face this push that he knows. He can see it. You can read the map. You can see it coming down the two line. He's trying to get oriented for that. But you have to realize, let me look at the map. There's nobody in that cap. It doesn't appear anyway, right? The Moskva is not in the cap. He's adjacent to it. The opposing U-2501 looks like he's on the south end of that cap somewhere. Certainly most of the other ships down at sea are not in that cap. So I actually have an opportunity. 
The Thrasher is going to play uh, a little wide. He's going to probably try and get some bow some torps into the bow of this Moskva or continue chasing the Delaware. But I'm actually going to do what I was talking about earlier. We're going to go play the top end of the B-cap on the opposite side of this island, this island wall from the opposing team. Now, one of the things, one of the mistakes I make making this move, for starters there, I burned a charge of DFA that didn't really get me anything. So that does feel a little bad. Um, secondly, I am going to get spotted by these fighters here in a moment. We talked about it in the, in the video earlier, right? Uh, Des Moines' aerial spotting is a little over six kilometers. I think it's about six and a half, six point three, six point four, something like that. And then my A range is only five point eight. So there is about a half kilometer window where I'm spotted that I'm not murdering these fighters. And the opposing Delaware is looking for me, right? He's down there along the two line. His guns flip back over his shoulder. And he actually takes a shot at me here that I don't even realize the shells are coming in until they basically are right there. Look at that. Bam. Oh, I got lucky right there. He was a little behind me. I took probably a couple of full, like a full pin, a couple over pins, and managed to not get deleted. So, little bit of luck there. Uh, should have been a little more frosty that that guy took a shot at me. The team is continuing to push down the two line. The Iowa, the Conquer, the Minnesota, all focusing this Moskva, doing a really good job of beating him up right through the nose, punishing him, and they can do that. He's putting up his radar now. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna return the favor because I want to know where the opposing team. is. Is. I want to know if the 2501 is on the surface. I want to know if he's in the cap. Turns out he's neither. This cap is actually clear. So now I'm going to drift into the top of this cap and start flipping it for us. We're still up a ship, but we're only down about 110 points now. Plenty of time left on the clock to impact this game. That Marceau on my radar is sitting just outside the cap boundary. He's not in the circle. I think he disconnected or something because he's sitting there right now just chilling, not doing anything. Now, do you remember earlier when I said, don't make the mistake of sitting still in a game with an aircraft carrier? What am I doing? I'm being stupid. Yep. The carrier, of course, is not stupid. He knows exactly what to do in this situation. I sh Maybe if I'd been trolling at a slow speed, low speed, whatever, it would have been decent. But instead, I give him the beautiful, a perfect shot. And of course, he robs me of about a third of my health and two fires. I have to put up, put up with that and, and heal it back. I do catch a quick glimpse of the 2501 right as my radar expires. And so now I have a couple of bad options, right? I can reverse and try to stay out of the 2501's line of sight, which is what I'm doing. He looks like he's submerged because I am continuing to cap. But it does mean that the opposing carrier is probably going to continue to harass me. So I need to keep my engines turning one way or another, preferably at full speed. Without knowing where the 2501 is, I don't want, I want to discourage him from coming through this channel. So I'm going to use my little depth charges here to try and block off that channel or at least punish him if he is trying to come up through there and get, you know, pop point blank shot, uh, point blank shot, try to shotgun me or something. It doesn't happen. We're five seconds from a cap and bam, either the Marceau steps in or the 2501 comes to the surface. I think he came to the surface there. He got briefly glimpsed by planes, and I'm, I'm continuing to throw shells, uh, throw out my depth charges in that direction, see if I can catch a view of him. It is the 2501 on the surface there, because the Marceau is now backing out of the cap. So it's now a 200-point lead for the enemy team, and the 2501 can now spot me through the gap. He's out there somewhere off to my starboard side. I cannot spot him. Of course, he is a little too stealthy. The opposing carrier coming back in with some torpedoes, but my engines were at least moving, so I have the opportunity to respond to this. Pop the defensive fire and start in on the planes. Now, he goes for a really, really bad drop here. He's trying to cross drop me, and I probably should have slowed down, let these torpedoes go by me. Instead, I go all the way to full speed as he comes back in for kind of another broad drop. He's just vomiting torpedoes out here in the hopes that I'm going to blunder into some, and he's going to get his wish. I'm going to take two right there that I probably could have avoided had I done things a little smarter. Radar going up. I'm going to catch the 2501 on the surface very briefly. He's going to do in a crash dive, but now that I know where to look for him, he's in trouble. Unfortunately, the torpedoes have already locked on and know exactly where I am, and gosh... Isn't that a fun mechanic, guys? It's so much fun playing game, playing World of Warships with submarines. So much fun. Good news is, he screws up a little bit as well, so we, we both take some punishment for that particular error. And now, I think I'm finally free to pick up this cap. 
Posing Marceau is going to duck in real briefly, but I think somebody's going to get shot. I forget how he dies, but I do end up picking up this cap here in just a bit. Opposing Carrier, not done with me yet, but this time I have some speed to play with. This time he's going to have a much harder time getting through my anti-aircraft screen and getting through, um, getting, getting damaged because I have speed maneuvering. I can turn. I can dodge some of these. He might get a reset here. I forget if he does. He does get a reset right there. One of the things that um, I've managed to do uh, sort of inadvertently by putting myself in this position is I've drawn the carrier's attention. He has been forced to come deal with a ship that has the anti-aircraft capabilities to really, really screw with him. And I've cost him a lot of planes, probably about 50, I think I've earned about 50,000 anti-aircraft damage just from maneuvering around here at the top end of the cap and forcing the carrier to come mess with me. And I've picked up a fair chunk of planes. While we finish this cap, let's take a quick look at the strategic situation. We now have a two-ship lead, the opposing carrier on the 10 line. We're not sure where this Yugamo is, but I have a sneaking suspicion he's way off to my left somewhere. The Thunder is continuing to run, and of course, we've still got that Delaware languishing on the bottom of the map where he is largely ineffective, although he does manage to burn down the Iowa right there. Rocket planes coming in. These I'm not particularly fussed with. I mean, if I'm low enough health, they'll do damage, but where I am right now, he's not going to have the time to pick me up and get a strike off, and he's probably got bigger fish to fry. The Kerfirst on the opposing side of me has a lot less health. He can probably pick up that kill if he's smart. Opposing carrier does do something very, very, very smart right there. With a you know doing a doing a pre-drop and managing to make some of his planes immune to my AA bubble as he flies through it. But now, if you caught it on the minimap, see the position of the Yugamo? Our carrier picked him up way up here on the northern end. And now that guy has a problem. Because I still have a charge of radar left, and I know where to look, and he's in my radar bubble. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go do what Des Moines does best. Take destroyers and make them cry. Five and a half seconds of reload. He cannot hide. He's got nowhere to hide for over 40 seconds here. Wide out in the open. No cover. The smoke's going to do him absolutely no good. With a four-second reload, this guy is in trouble. And sure enough, there you go. Pick that up. Torpedoes are coming in, but they're not going to do him any good. Is now, let's, okay, so now we're getting down to the end here. The game's starting to wind down. It's It's 4v3. I'm getting pretty low on HP. I've only got one heal left. The opposing carrier is still trying to strike me. But you'll notice now, have a look. He doesn't have full squadrons anymore. All the anti-aircraft work that we've done is finally starting to pay off. And right there, he drives through more flak, more flak. In fact, he's going to lose the entire squadron, and I'm going to pick up an A defense expert. Against a midway. That feels good. 100,000 plane damage in this match, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I mean when I say not only is defensive fire... Of course, I did use a charge of defensive fire right there. But, like, this is what I mean when I say defensive fire is so good on the right ships. And I strongly feel like the American heavy cruisers are those ships, right? And we'll talk about that with the American light cruisers as well. Midway's now going to make some bad decisions. He knows I'm out here. He can't do anything about that while the Thrasher is capping. He's trying to play defense. He's trying to bomb the Thrasher. The planes are still going to at least force the Thrasher to dive, which he does right there. You see him giving up the cap points. And the opposing Delaware is still available as well, so poor Thrasher has got a lot of planes to dodge. But if you'll notice, the Midway's last position was over here on the 10 line. I've got the AP in the barrel. We're going carrier hunting. And sure enough, there he is. Well within my range, trapped up against the map border, really nowhere to turn, nowhere to hide. He's actually stationary when I first spot him. And now I have just made myself, by opening fire, I have just made myself public enemy number one. There is absolutely 100% no question what this midway is going to do next. And that is he's going to attempt to murder me because he has to in self-defense. But with a 4.2 second reload, and my anti-aircraft bubble, he is going to struggle. Now, one of us is going home, and one of us is going to the bottom. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting fight over the next few moments to see how that goes. I'm already many, many citadels into his health pool. He does get a good bomb strike off. I do make a bit of a mistake here. Do you see it? I have a charge of defensive fire available. I should have used it. I should have used it right here. Why not? Why not? It's possible I might have killed all those planes. Instead, I took a decent chunk of damage, four or 5,000 there. He does get the rocket planes off the deck. They're coming in, and I am going to use the defensive fire here. 
as somebody shot at me there. I think it might have been the Thunderer. I don't know. Too late. I do get the Midway. The Rocket Planes are going to clean me up. But you know what? That's a good trade. I'm really happy with that trade. I traded my life for basically half the opposing carrier's air wing and the, and the hull of the ship itself, plus, what, a destroyer, two destroyers and a submarine. In a Des Moines, I have done my job, ladies and gentlemen. I have done my job. I don't even have 100,000 damage. I'm 100% happy with the result of this game. And I think you will be too when you see the XP result in just a moment. With the Midway dead, it makes it much more difficult for the opposing team to suss out this Thrasher. He does spot the rocket planes coming in as he goes deep again. This is what I mean when I say the Thrasher was a bit of a hero, right? Like, this guy is still alive. How many submarine players do you see last 18 minutes in a match? Most of them get trapped. They make mistakes. They get they something dumb. They get dead. This Thrasher player has had a tough game, right? But he's picked up all, he's picked up caps. He's done the Lord's work. He's gotten some damage. He's gotten some kills. He hasn't gotten any kills, but he's definitely gotten some damage. And just his presence has made a real mess of how the enemy team was able to deploy and work in this game. It's all going to come down to Delaware versus Conqueror here. Thrasher's got some torpedoes out. Delaware's fine. That's the Delaware that, that was trying to hit me earlier. That's how long he ran south. That guy basically played the edge of the map, the one line, and ran south the entire game after his, after his other Delaware buddy died. Very like He died first, like way up, way up on the ACAP. You remember him getting smashed out very early, and he's finally going to go here in just a few moments. The opposing midway, realizing the game's over, going to try to get a little more chip damage out of his last surviving planes. Thrasher's now uh, still submerged, trying to run away from this guy, but in the end, they're finally going to clean up this Delaware, and we're going to pick up a nice little win here on Okinawa. Again, one of one of my, I just, ugh, I despise this map. I genuinely despise this map. But let's have a look at the results screen, because I think you're going to be a little surprised at the XP result. For starters, of course... Little less than 100,000 damage, four kills, 44 big old plane kills. That always feels good. I'm like I said, I just I'm very happy with what Des Moines did in this game. Des Moines did everything in this game that I want a heavy cruiser, certainly an American heavy cruiser, to do. I citadel the things that I should have been citadeling. I used my radar to murder destroyers and submarines. I used my plane, my anti-aircraft fire to defend myself and my team. I'm very, very happy with the reverse result. And the XP would agree with me. 2,700, almost 2,800 base XP there. Really, really, really nice result and an AA medal to go with it. Wasn't able to get, of course, you know, like a high caliber or a confederate, which would have bumped that, bumped that XP total a little better. Some of that's just because I spent a lot of time. I mean, most of the overwhelming majority of my damage you see there, you know, I had, I had 99,000 damage. Two thirds of that come on, came on the fact that I basically, you know, was the only, I, I killed the midway by myself, right? I basically 100 to zero the midway all by myself. Everything else was essentially cleanup. You see there, four or 5,000 damage on the Cossack and the E2501 and the last 8,000 damage on the Yugamo. So I get credit for the kills, but the overwhelming majority of the damage coming on the enemy carrier out of those AP shells, mm, so good. The other thing I want to point out, of course, we had 123, 124,000 damage to planes. That's crazy. And it's also the kind of thing that boosts your XP total, right? So, because remember guys, now you get rewarded in XP and credits, not for how many planes you kill, but for how much damage, AA damage you deal. And that has a significant uh, impact on my, on my total in this match. I guarantee it. But look at the bomber kills. Look at the bomber kills. 44 plane kills, all but two of them are bomber kills. I mauled this guy's, this guy's torpedoes and dive bombers because he kept bringing them back over me. I did make some mistakes. I gave up more health than I should have in a couple of advantages. So a couple of situations. So this is not a flawless game by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still a great result. And I think it's an excellent example of what Des Moines can achieve um, against, against a game that has literally every class in the game in it, what she's capable of and what she's really, really good at. All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this sample Des Moines game. I'm particularly proud of that one. Yes, it was not a flawless game. I did make some dumb mistakes, but, I mean, how often do you get to solo the, uh, solo the enemy carrier and murder his entire air group? That's a great feeling. Um, lots of great base XP out of that game. A, a really good example of, the, of what Des Moines does well and the kinds of things that maybe she doesn't do well, uh, certainly uh, in certain situations and man, uh, Okinawa, ugh, ugh, ugh. I just can't, I cannot, I cannot express my disdain for Okinawa enough. I just don't like that map. Anyway, guys, 
I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, this series of videos. I'm going to be moving on to something else next. I'm not quite sure yet. I think it's going to be Japanese heavy cruisers. We'll keep an eye out for that. Um, should be coming in the next couple of weeks. Uh, otherwise, wash your hands. Be safe. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.